The PSI-5 protocol is used to transmit serial data, primarily in automotive applications, from smart sensors to the automobile's ECU, or one of the automobile's ECUs. A typical application is airbag. Now, the PSI-5 uh, data transmission is achieved via current modulation. So there's uh, really only two lines going to these smart sensors, ground and power. So it's the power line that's current modulated, and it's also uh, Manchester encoded. Now, as you can see in this graphic, it, we probably should take a look at the frame format before we get into the demonstration to set it up. It always consists of two start bits, followed by a payload or a data field that can be anywhere from 1 to 28 bits. Now, the signal that we're going to be using today is going to be a 10-bit data word. And then the last field is either a 3-bit CRC field or a 1-bit parity. Now, the signal we'll be using is a 1-bit parity. Uh, now, as I mentioned, it's based on current modulation. And we'll be using a built-in training signal on this oscilloscope, the PSI-5 simulated signal. However, it's a voltage signal. It comes through these two uh, test slugs out here. Uh, so in order to make it a little more realistic, what I've done is I've connected a twisted wire and then terminated it in a low-level resistor. I think it's only about 10 ohms. And so now we have current flowing in here, and I'm going to use a clamp-on Hall Effect current probe and just clamp on that there, and now we're going to be measuring modulated current. So in order to decode and trigger on the PSI-5, what we're going to be using in the scope is the user-definable Manchester trigger and decode option, which is very flexible. It covers a broad range of protocols based on Manchester, not just PSI-5. So let's go ahead and get started with the demo. So let's start with a default setup on the oscilloscope. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on bandwidth limit as well as I'm going to select the high resolution mode because this is a very low level current signal and I want to minimize the noise floor. Next, I'll go into the help menu and this is where we can select the training signals. Here you can see a long list of various training signals. Now this used to be a, an option in these oscilloscopes. It's now a standard feature. And there are several serial bus signals. If I select the Manchester, that's the PSI-5 signal. Now at this point, the signal should be there. The current probe should be picking it up. But remember, it's very, very low level. It's only about 20 millivolts peak to peak. And the scope is currently set at 5 amps per division. So I'm just going to vertically zoom in, set my vertical scaling. Now it's at 10 milliamps per division. I'm going to press the trigger level knob and it'll automatically center the trigger level. And this is our PSI-5 signal. If I stop it, there you can see these uh, various burst or PSI frames. To set up the decode, we'll go into the serial menu and select the Manchester mode. Now, we support a broad range of protocols. You can see uh, I square C, SPI, CAN, LIN, FlexRay. We'll select the Manchester decode. Now, to set up the decode, there are three main submenus, signals, bus configuration, and setting. There's several parameters we have to set up. As I mentioned, it's a user-definable Manchester decode, so it supports a broad range of applications. So let's first go into the signals menu. This is where we can define who is the input source. In this case, we can use the default channel 1. The threshold level, which is actually the same as the trigger level. We have it set up there about 50%. The baud rate with the Manchester decode, it can range anywhere from 2 kilobits per second up to 5 megabits per second. However, PSI-5 most typically is 125 kilobits per second, which is the default setting. But there are some PSI-5 buses that are based on 189 kilobits per second. And then the tolerance, we'll just leave it here at 20%. Now let's back out of that menu, go into the bus configuration menu. This is where we can essentially duplicate the frame formatting. The first selection over here is display format, either bit format, which is simply going to decode it as a string of ones and zeros, or word format, which is a little higher level, and this is what we're going to use initially. We'll come back to the bit format later. The sync size is where we define the two start bits, so we can just enter two. Header size, the default is zero. We're just going to leave it at zero. We only have one 
data word in this PSI 5 frame. And so we'll set the number of words, change it from the default of auto to one word, and it's a 10-bit word, so we'll change the default from 8 to 10. And the trailer size is our one-bit parity. We'll set that to one bit. Now let's back out of that menu and go into the last setup menu, the settings submenu. Start edge, we're going to detect the very first start bit as the, the first edge in a, in a burst. Some Manchester frames, they have non-Manchester bits prior to the first actual start bit or sync bit. In this case, it's, it's number one. Polarity, uh, for Manchester encoding for PSI 5, a falling edge in the middle of a bit time is defined as a logic one. That's the default setting. Some Manchester um, buses, it's just the opposite of polarity. We'll use the default. The bit order, if you remember from the frame format we showed earlier, is based on LSB first. Idle bits, 1.5, so if it sees more than one and a half bit between frames, it will decide that's a new frame. And then decode base, it can be either be hex, ASCII, or unsigned decimal. ASCII right there is grayed out because back in the bus configuration menu, we defined the word size to be 10. If it was 8, ASCII would be uh, highlighted and we could select it. So we're just going to use the hex decode format. Lastly, I'm going to turn on the lister. Now at this point, the scope is decoding the bus, but we're not triggering on anything yet. We're just triggering on uh, random uh, rising edges, which was uh, when we press default setup, that's what it selected as a trigger mode. Before we set up a specific trigger condition, a few things I'd like to point out. Number one, notice the fast decode update rate. That's because this scope utilizes hardware-based decoding. So that's important for two reasons. One, it makes the scope very responsive, very usable. I can change things like seconds per division, volts per division. I get an immediate response. There's not a lag or a delay like you see on a lot of scopes that have software-based decoding. The other important thing for uh, hardware-based decoding that gives you essentially a real-time update rate, if you notice all this red flashing here, is detecting errors. If errors are very infrequent, the faster you can update decoding, the more likely you are to see these errors. We'll analyze this particular error in a little more detail in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and set up a more specific trigger condition. I'll go into the trigger menu, select the trigger type. Here you can see we're currently we're triggering on edges, but there is a, uh, a, a broad range of uh, advanced triggering. I'm going to select the serial Manchester triggering. And then I have a choice of triggering on start a frame, which is the default. That's what we're triggering on right now. A value, so a particular value of that particular frame, or Manchester error. Let's set up a specific value first. So I'm going to select value. And then remember our words that we're decoding are 10 bits wide. So let's set it up as 10 bits. And then triggering must be set up in binary format in the order of bit received. So I know there's one particular frame in here that generates a 3FF in hex, which is all ones in binary. So I'm just going to set it all to all ones by selecting max. So there you can see I've locked on to 3FF. And let's go ahead and reposition that a little bit. Let's put our trigger point over there near the left side of the screen. And there you can see four PSI 5 frames on screen. Now we can see this Manchester error a little more clearly. Now, if these are very infrequent, you might want to set up the scope to trigger on a Manchester error. So let's do that now. Let's select Manchester error, and I'll put my trigger event back at center screen. Now let's go in here and analyze. Now, why are we getting a Manchester error in this particular frame. Now, one thing that might help us is to go change the display format from the word format that we're showing right now to a bit format. So I'm going to go back into the serial menu, bus configuration, and go to the bit format. And with the bit format, let's back it back down here. Here you can see it's decoding all in binary. Um, and then if I zoom in, you can see this particular frame that I'm 
decoding here with the Manchester error, there's only six bits, and then it detects the Manchester error. Now, something unique about the InfiniVision scopes is I can set the time base up to a very specific value. For instance, I can set up for one division per bit. Now, 125 kilobits per second is equal to eight microseconds per bit. So I'm going to change the time base to exactly eight microseconds per division. And then I'm going to reposition it to show everything bit by bit. So these are our two start bits. This is the first decoded bit, which is a zero. So each of these vertical grids you see here are the bit boundaries. So there is a transition, should be a transition, in the middle of each bit. So here we can see a transition from a low to a high. That's a zero. The next bit, low to high, that's a zero. Next one is high to low, one, high to low, one. And any transitions on the bit boundaries are ignored. This is low to high, a zero, low to high, a zero. But in this particular field right here, or this bit boundary, this bit, there is no transition in the middle of this bit duration. And the scope immediately detects that as a Manchester error. If you'd like to learn more about triggering and decoding on the PSI-5 sensor bus, we have an application note that I think will give you a little bit more detail. You can download it at the URL listed on your screen. There's also a wide range of other automotive-focused application notes as well as videos at this same website. Simplify.